In this video, you're going to get a summary of the book Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. It is by far the best book I've read on negotiation. I think you're going to love it. So let's do it. Never Split the Difference goes in a totally opposite direction to most traditional negotiation tactics, advice and teachings. And for a good reason. The author, Chris Voss, is a former FBI negotiator who is used to dealing with hostage takers, bank robbers and violent people of all types. And when the stakes are as high as someone's life, the generic getting to yes or win-win negotiation fall flat on their face. After all, if the person who you love the most in the world has been taken hostage, splitting the difference with the other side is probably not the best outcome you want. Chris Voss teaches that why most of the old school negotiation tactics don't work is because they completely ignore the actual human being that's doing the negotiation. People are irrational, they're emotional, they're biased and that's what makes us human after all. A successful negotiation is all about being emotionally intelligent and empathetic to the other side. It's about forming a genuine human connection with the other person. Emotion, not logic, determines the success or failure of negotiations. Your goal as a negotiator is to establish trust by getting the other side to see you're welcoming, you're perceptive, you're insightful and warm. You're not there to bully them into submission or bury them with facts. You're there to empathize and help them see that solving your problem solves their problem as well. It all starts with active listening. Before you can turn human emotion into your advantage, you need to make sure the other person feels heard and understood. To do that, you need to become a master of active listening. It is the act of muting your own internal commentary and focusing 100% or as much as you can of your attention to what the other person is actually saying. This is radically different to what you and I are used to doing in everyday life, which is passive listening, hearing what you want to hear and filtering out the rest, or concentrating on formulating your answer while the other person is still talking, thus not really paying attention. To demonstrate your superb listening skills, you make use of a tactic called mirroring. You reply using the last three or four words of what the other person said. For example, if they say, I cannot believe it's going to be so unbelievably cold on Friday, your reply starts with, yeah, Friday is going to be unbelievably cold and then you continue with what you want to say. By imitating their speech patterns, you're signaling on a subconscious emotional level to the other person that you're not only hearing them, but you're similar to them. This creates trust. Trust wins negotiations. You have made the other person feel heard. Now it's time to level up and make them feel understood. You do that by employing tactical empathy. It is understanding someone else's perspective and then vocalizing it in order to get what you want. You do that by what the author calls labeling. You actively listen to the other person and then you vocalize their emotion with a neutral third person phrase such as it seems like, it sounds like, or it looks like. Let me demonstrate this with an example from the book. A pharmaceutical rep was having a conversation with a doctor who told her up front he's totally uninterested in switching to the drug she was offering. Talk about starting a negotiation on the wrong foot. But while they were talking, the rep noticed that the doctor's voice and entire attitude lights up when he's talking about his patients. So she employed some tactical empathy and said, It seems like you really care about the well-being of your patients. Which made the doctor bring his guard down and turn the whole situation around. The rep actively listened, extracted the emotion from the conversation and stated it out loud with a it seems like type of phrase. In this case she was totally on point with her observation, but even if she wasn't, using a third person phrase leaves her with the exit strategy. If the doctor would have said, not even close, she could reply, I didn't say that was the case, I just said it seems like thus diffusing a potentially bad situation. She's essentially being just an observer of what the other person is saying. She's not expressing her own opinion about it. 
Your goal as a successful negotiator is to actively listen, employ tactical empathy and use mirroring and labeling to get the other side to the magical two words. That's right. When you have summarized the other person's words and emotions and you've earned a that's right from them, they're essentially crediting you for seeing things their way. You have successfully connected with them on an emotional level and that will totally transform the whole negotiation environment. The next step is to use calibrated questions. These are open-ended how and what questions for when you inevitably hear something you don't like. For example, if you're negotiating with your landlord who wants to increase your rent, instead of just saying no, you can just hit him with something like, how am I supposed to do that? Or what are we really trying to accomplish here? This type of questions prompts a longer answer. They put the other person to work helping solve your problem. If they reply with something which is better, but still not what you had in mind, you employ some tactical empathy again and another variation of the same calibrated question. So if your landlord says something like, okay, how about we did we do this price instead of this price? You can reply with, it sounds like you think your property is undervalued compared to similar properties in the area, but how am I supposed to afford it given my salary, which is fixed? And you keep on going till you've reached the goal. Tactical empathy, calibrated questions over and over until you reach your final destination. Successful negotiations are all about understanding that the emotions of the other person play a much bigger role than facts and logic. By making them feel heard and understood, you can diffuse any situation. And when you make use of empathy to demonstrate you really understand their perspective and connect with them on an emotional level, you can turn any negotiation in your favor. Now, let's see how you can make use of these tactics for yourself to turn into a master negotiator. Hey, welcome back. So how do you put all this goodness to use for yourself? Here's how. To me, the biggest takeaway from this entire book is about you need to get good at listening. Because in order for you to negotiate or in order for you to be a good communicator for that matter, you need to be able to empathize with the other person so that you can get them to empathize back with you. And it all starts with you being able to listen, being able to understand what they're saying. And in my experience, and I'm sure this is yours as well, most people are really bad at listening. You've had these conversations, you're talking to somebody and you can see that they're thinking about something else. And they even might be thinking about the conversation that you're having, but they're not listening to you. They're trying to formulate what their reply is going to be. So the first step is you need to get good at listening. You need to practice. The good part about it is you have so many conversations day in, day out, professional, personal, that you can start practicing probably in the next 10 minutes. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to start paying attention to the other side. Whether it's a conversation about the weather that you're having with somebody on public transportation or a conversation with your boss, I want you to really give them 100% of your attention. And then to see if you really understood them, try to summarize it. As, the, as, the, as Chris Voss suggests in the book, try to say, it sounds like, and then put a summary of what you understood, or it seems like, and then the summary. So listen, pay 100% attention to what the other person is saying, and then summarize it. It seems like you feel like this. From what I understood, you seem like this. Summarize it and see if you're correct. Because if you're not paying attention, if you're not paying attention to the other person, to the conversation, whether it's in a high stakes negotiation or a random conversation down the street, you wouldn't be able to empathize with the other person. So you wouldn't be able to empathize them back and then you've lost the game. So practice, listen, and you'll be blown away. You'll be blown away by how little we probably have been paying attention. Because when I first did this exercise, oh my God, I was paying so little attention and I thought that I'm one of those people that really concentrates and then I discover there is a whole new level. So the next conversation you have, random conversation, personal business, doesn't matter. I want you to give them 100% of your attention and then summarize what's being said. It seems like, it sounds like, and then putting your summary. Get good at listening. This is the first step to becoming a great communicator and a great negotiator. That was the book, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. That was my take on it. And now I pass on the question to you. What was your takeaway? What do you think about this whole book? What do you think about Chris Voss as an author? I really like it, but that doesn't mean that you did. Let me know in the comment section below. 
And if you want more books such as this one on communication, on negotiation, on self-help, on business, on motivation, click on the link below, subscribe, join the family. I put out these videos each and every week. Have an amazing day. Go out there, listen, pay attention, and have an amazing day.